to our Spring 21, 2021 Friday Forum series, the digital uh, shaping and misshaping of the world. Um, today, this is our second talk of our series. So if you joined us last week, um, thank you for continuing. And if this is your first time in the series, thank you for joining us either way. Um, just to kind of set the scene for anyone who's joining us for, uh, the, this is their first Friday Forum. Friday Forum is a weekly lecture series that's held each semester. Uh, here at the University Y, and it strives to raise awareness about national and international trends and events, um, and really just provide a space to address topics of relevance and urgency um, in our society. Some of our uh, past series have looked at a variety of topics like art as activism, environmental justice, and just last semester we looked at the current state of our democracy. Um, so. Uh, really a great series to just talk about different things happening in the world and that are affecting all of us in many different ways. Um, for this semester, we're really looking at technology and how technology is shaping our world and also misshaping it um, and how it intersects with a variety of different um, topics. And so we're really excited to be able to have our guests here today to talk to you all a little bit about um, their specialty and their expertise. So um, quickly in the chat, I'm about to send a list of all of our sponsors. Uh, we wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who supported um, this series and helped make it possible. Without you, we wouldn't be able to continue this. So thank you so much to everyone who supported us and who's partnered with us through the series. So um, as you're listening to the talk, if you have any questions, if there's anything that's being said that really catches your attention and you wanna learn more, please feel free to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen or through the chat function um, and, send, and send any questions you have. And towards the end of the talk, we're gonna go ahead and have some time for Q&A. Um, so you'll have a chance to get your questions answered. So if you joined us last week, um, you heard Sable Manson who talked to us a little bit about faith and technology and the way keeping faith remotely has looked during the state of the pandemic. Um, today, I'm really excited to have members of the Urbana-Champaign Independent Media Center Collaborative um, Disinformation Defense Team. And they're gonna be talking to us about their national campaign uh, to fight disinformation. So misinformation and disinformation about COVID-19, about voting and youth uh, really disproportionately impact black and brown communities. And so with support and resources from national leaders like Media Justice, the IMC um, teamed up with community organizations, um, including Unity and Action Magazine and HV Neighborhood Transformation to uh, create this uh, campaign. And so the panelists are gonna share a little bit about the project, how it's unfolded, um, and also discuss what next steps are needed. So I'm going to introduce our speakers and then I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to them so they can go ahead and uh, talk to us and tell us about their project. So we have um, Tanya Parker, who grew up in Champaign and graduated from the University of, Lin of Illinois with a degree in economics and achieved a master's in teaching from Western Governors University. Um, in 2004, she founded Unity in Action Magazine, which was originally named Habari Connection, uh, which is a not-for-profit media outlet that connects and engages the community to address social and, and economic concerns that affect African-American communities. Um, in 2010, Parker was awarded the prestigious Social Entre Entrepreneurship Award, Innovation Award by the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation and the University of Illinois. Um, she's joined by Maurice Hayes, who's a community activist, author, poet, and small business owner, um, and creator of community-based programs and projects that engage at-risk youth, um, formerly incarcerated people and residents of challenged and violence-torn neighborhoods. Um, Maurice has dedicated his life to being the messenger and example necessary to deliver the idea that you can grow from the worst situations and rise above the dis dismal uh, circumstances tugging at elevation. Um, after serving a term of 17.5 years in the Illinois Department of Correction, Maurice has vowed to dedicate his life to saving the lives of young men and women, tra uh, treating a path he once traveled himself. And, they're, and last but not least, they're joined by Miriam Larson, who's the Executive Director of the Urbana Champaign Independent Media Center. Um, before joining IMC, she worked as an elementary school librarian in the Champaign schools. She has worked as a labor union organizer, a community technology specialist, a children's book review, reviewer, and a human statue. Uh, she also plays flute with several local and traveling bands, including the Mean Lids. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to them. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, uh, definitely feel free to chat them throughout the talk and we'll have time to get to them towards the end. Um, so thank you all for being here and I'll go ahead and pass it on to you. 
Thank you. Thank you all for, for inviting us today and for joining us in the audience. We hope to leave time near the end for a Q&A. Um, we do tend to talk. Um, feel free to, to put something in the chat um, that you'd like us to answer as we're talking, or maybe we can um, definitely, of course, have some time at the end for a Q&A again. Um, disinformation is a very important topic right now. Um, it's been used by years by racist groups to promote their racist ideologies, to de destroying the lives of black and brown communities for decades. Most recently, even as a nation, we saw the power of disinformation with the insurrection. We saw how it divided not just black and brown communities, it divided our nation. It created um, a uh, environment that was through the use of social media quickly, quickly um, spread. And that's what we're facing as a nation now with disinformation, how quickly with social media and YouTube and things now with technology spreading um, and, and, um, and baking in communities. We saw the power again of unchecked disinformation. Part of our work um, in this campaign with UCIMC's Stop Disinformation campaign is to help to talk and educate folks about what disinformation is, how it looks in their communities, but also how we can address it as citizens, as, as people that are participants in our democracy. Today, we look forward to starting out with a discussion on just the broad discussion of what is disinformation um, and just some general ways that we can address it. And then we have a second speaker, uh, Maurice is gonna take us into looking at a specific example um, at Quintel Pro and how that directly um, impacts um, black, and brown black and brown communities, looking at disinformation, how it specifically impacts black and brown communities. Um, and then we're gonna leave, end with uh, Miriam that is gonna help us to understand how we and you, um, we're hoping that you can help us in and addressing and, and refusing to leave unchecked um, disinformation in our community and our nation and our quest for democracy. Okay, I'm gonna roll through the slides now. So Media Justice um, supports our work. Um, and I wanna tell you that they are, um, if you haven't heard of them, um, this is their uh, mission. They're boldly advanced racial and economic and gender justice in a digital age by fighting for just and, per, and uh, participatory platforms for, for expression. We harness community power through the Media Justice Network of more than 100 local organizations, including our local Urbana-Champaign Independent Media Center. We claim the right to media and, and technology that keeps us all connected, represented, and free. At the, at the end of our discussion with Miriam Larson, she will introduce you more to our local uh, UCIMC so that you'll know how you can be involved in helping us. So disinformation, what's at stake? You know, it, it came clear that not only is our democracy at stake, with COVID-19, for example, our lives are at stake. Even with the insurrection, there were lives at stake that lost lost lives. And, you know, overall, it's our democracy. It's very important that we find ways that we can organize, that we equip the tools for people like yourself to help us find ways to address um, disinformation. So we often cross this question, what is disinformation? So I just wanted to kind of talk about the, the basic definitions, you know? What's the difference, right? So you have misinformation. Misinformation is information whose inaccuracies were unintentional and often spread unknowingly. And, you know, I, I kind of, you know, think of it as, you know, innocent folks that are just, you know, on their social media, in their communities, and they run across something and they quickly share it. Um, and they, you know, they're spread it not knowing, not taking the time to do research because, you know, it's, it's different, different people's, um, um, you know, um, 
patterns. I mean, some people don't research all the facts, right? And it, it, it was very unintentional. But when we're talking about disinformation, we're talking about the deliberateness, the intent behind it. To often spread for political gain, profit, or to discredit a target individual group. As we saw with, with what we all felt over this last four years, this, this deliberate political attack and that weight and that intent is what makes it disinformation. When we talk about racialized disinformation, disinformation, racialized disinformation campaigns employ the strategic use of falsified racial and ethnic identities and or focus on race in its wedge issue. What are methods? So this is throughout history. I mean, this is nothing new. We just felt it last these last four years and last year, but this is nothing new. Um, forged correspondences, um, false media stories, deceitful leaflets, bogus documentaries, fake newspapers, social media and YouTube. Part of what the work that we have been doing is we've been holding workshops that show specific examples of these and helping to train journalists and um, other folks in the community to be able to quickly, um, quickly do a, a quick research, quickly be able to identify different signals that will help them to know this is fake. I, I shouldn't share this or this is fake. This is how I can address this. So I would like to just share with you, it's kind of a little fun, but this is just five ways to handle disinformation. It's a fun video that we shared during our workshop. Disinformation. Our friends and family love to share it. And although it's not their fault, it's still really bad. So here are five things to keep in mind next time you see your tia sharing something that's wrong. Number one, before you even try to correct someone for sharing something misleading, fact check it yourself. Run it through a couple websites and then you can talk to them about it. Because trust me, you don't want to be wrong while telling someone else that they're wrong, especially not your tia. Number two, do not call them out in public. What's the point? Just reach out to them privately and help them out. Number three, put yourself in their shoes. We've all been there. Running back to your phone to delete something because it turned out to be wrong? It's okay. We play for the same team here. Number four, don't push it. If they start to get defensive and won't listen to what you're saying, no pasa nada. You spoke your truth and now it's on them. Number five, change starts from within. The best way to help your friends and family is to educate yourself first. Learn everything you can about how to combat disinformation and tell everybody you know. Because even though your tia only has 20 friends on Facebook, that's 20 people whose lives you can save by simply correcting one post. Thank you. So we, we like to, I'm going to share uh, the next slide. And this is if you have a camera, if you have a screenshot, you can take a, a quick photo. But these are just things to keep in mind and share with others, because what we find is that when we're trying to encourage people to to not leave disinformation unchecked, that people are uncomfortable finding ways to address it. So that's one of the things that we've been wanting to cover in our workshop. And if you just take a, a quick snapshot of this or you'll have it um, as just a quick maybe thing you can share with others and not only share, but have for yourself as tools that you can use to address this information. Next slide, please. So um, in leaning into um, our next speaker, um, Maurice is gonna take us on a conversation that will help us to understand why disinformation can be so damaging, especially to black and brown communities. White supremacy has used, um, we know that, you know, their um, tactics um, have proved to be um, based on disinformation um, about African-American people 
um, and the intent is definitely there. Um, the biggest example is Quintel Pro. Um, the deliberate attack from government on black and brown communities. This is gonna lead me to introducing our next speaker, Maurice Hayes from HVNT. Hey guys, doing? Um, I'm Maurice Hayes, thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, I am the executive director of HV Neighborhood Transformation and my stance on disinformation and misinformation led to a great conversation between the three of us last night. And when you think about it, um, disinformation and misinformation is lies, right? There's plain language. Someone is spreading lies and falsehoods about individual people, groups, demographics, geographical locations, whatever it may be. So I wanted to tie this into the reality of what the world and society has been for those African-Americans or black people like me that come from high up areas and even the fluent areas during the early portions of what America was to us. The identity of black people have been disparaged from the beginning of time. And it was spread through information that was generated by people who want to have that supremacy as you see on the screen, white supremacy, the idea or ideology that white people and the ideas, thoughts, beliefs and actions of white people are superior. But beyond that is the physical being of who black people are um, where we come from and, and what we stand for. We have, we have generationally been considered a threat and that plays out even now in 2021. As Tanya was spoke about uh, COINTELPRO, I just wanna use a few examples of past, um, present, and, and even today, right? When you think about COINTELPRO, the people that were targeted were people that was fighting for liberation of a people fighting for freedom, fighting for equality and the rights of a people, utilizing, if you think about the Black Panther Party, utilizing the, the, the ammunition of the Constitution, um, utilizing the, the, the ammunition of law that those young men studied and young women studied, um, and the attack on them by a top federal government official um, was to poison the minds and the thoughts of the people who may follow them and those who may share the same disdain for the community of black and brown people and during that time we were black people. So, so to stop the rise of the Messiah, prevent the coalition, uh, prevent violence, destroy respectability, prevent growth of an organization. If you think about what that entails in, in regards to the, the civil rights movement and the fight for equality and black liberation, the ideal of J. Edgar Hoover and the officials were to make black, to demonize black people in the fight that they were in to get the equal rights that they had as American citizens. And this disinformation and misinformation, minus the semantics lies, uh, was created on a, on a level and distributed in a way that there was no way that you can get in front of it. From that time and before that time, it leads to the way that our communities, our high hope areas, um, in every high hope area in the state, the city or the world, sees themselves in many regards. Um, the Black Panther Party, as I go back to them, were in the community doing community work for the people, by the people, with no other means than to make sure that we took care of ourselves. The dehumanization of them through Cointel Pro made them look like uh, racial militants or people who were trying to uh, overthrow government. Um, and the fear of them being black and the stigma attached to them as violent, um, uh, um, malicious people kind of took on a life of his own as well as with the movement was ultimately destroyed it from the inside out. Next slide, please. Some of that information prevented the knowledge and the, the, the understanding of who the young men and the women of that community were. With the disinformation and, and the dismantling of the Black Panther Party and other community organizations, in High Hope areas, it took away that leadership role for us and, and what we look like and look for and who we are. And that was did in order to give, give that supremacy to, again, white people and, and those who put it out. Even if you go forward to today, distribution of misinformation and disinformation is distribute, distributed to an audience, people who are readily available to receive the lies of 
whatever it may be, because it fits their ideology. We move into uh, Trump becoming president. And I know that's a hot topic, which is why I wanted to speak on it. During the Black Lives Matter movement or the George Floyd uprising, you saw us, next slide please, you saw black people standing together, white people standing together to fight injustice. And from that, there were many people arrested, many people harmed, many people killed. Um, we even marched to the Capitol um, to, to voice our, our anger and disdain for the injustice that we continue to endure and the inequality that we continue to endure. And we were met, as you can look on the screen like this, this is in Chicago. We were met with this. But when you think about what happened during the insurrection based on, again, misinformation, disinformation, without the semantics of the word lies that was spirit from another high level government official, maybe the highest, the president of the United States, it spawned a whole movement um, of people who shared those same views. Now we can all say that they were protesting or they were arg angry about uh, the idea of the election being stolen from them. You can make that argument. The election wasn't stolen, but if you can see, those are all white people fighting about an election and injustice. When the previous slide, you saw black and white people standing for racial injustice and inequality. So when you think about misinformation and the, the language that's given, there's an audience for it. Even in your neighbor communities, there's people lying on people every day and there's open ears ready to hear it. So in our thing now is how do we change the narrative? We can't keep kicking the can down the road. And for me, as you can see on the screen, I deal with a lot of young people in high hope areas. I'm actually a case manager in the organization Youth Build, I'm sponsored by the Champaign Housing Authority. And through the knowledge of what we've gained, myself and other brothers like me and young women like me, we try to indoctrinate the kids with a different narrative a narrative that highlights them and doesn't put them in the position to feel less than anyone, right? Because if you think about it, even in school now, today, it's February now, you could turn on any TV right now and for honor of Black History Month and you'll see civil rights, you'll see slavery, you'll see roots, you'll see dogs being um, put on human beings, you'll see people being sped on and all those people look like us. And for so long, that was the, the action that people believe we should receive and deserve based on the information they received. So when we think about misinformation and disinformation, we have to go all the way back to where it began. At. You know, we can't talk about the small subjects or the things that's hot right now because there's a history, a generational history of how misinformation and disinformation has disparaged an entire culture and race of people, right? Those are the things that we need to add more attention and, and talk about rather than the small things like, you know, in, in some regards, people may disagree with me that like COVID vaccines and all that old funny stuff like that. I don't know the science of that, but I do know the history of what my culture and my people have went through based on misinformation being given and lies being given to a whole country of people who believed it. Say what you want to say about Donald Trump. He generated 75 million votes based on the ideology and the ideal that black, that white people were superior than whites. No matter how you shake it, from the beginning of his campaign to the end of his election, he showed his intent and he generated the support of the intent, which called the insurrection um, that we witnessed on January 6th. So my advice and my thought for guys and for whoever is paying attention to this, this, this broadcast right now is to really determine what you believe. What do you believe in? How do you see yourself? Are you indoctrinated with the same philosophies and ideologies that were unknowingly given to you and you carry those now? Or will you be able enough to get your own mind together? And when you do, join us in trying to re-educate uh, and re-indoctrinate these young people who are now still suffering from those same things of 1956 and beyond. Am I muted? Can y'all hear me? Awesome. Uh, so thank you, Maurice and Tanya. I, um, you know, 
the pieces that I, I super appreciate about uh, what Tanya and Maurice both do is is to really sort of call on our inner truth, right? And and uh, acknowledge that <clears throat> that history hasn't set up to be super in touch with our with our inner truth um, or to to amplify voices um, that give us a good sense of of what our community has to say. And so, um, you know, I think all of us really come at disinformation, not so much by sort of researching or following all the um, all the fake news out there, um, but really tuning into who are we as creators? What is our truth? And um, how can we lift that up in ourselves and others? And so that is how I see community media really fighting disinformation is, is, is bringing um, narrative power to the community. Um, this is a, a poster from an event at the Independent Media Center this past fall, Can You Hear Me Now, um, by Black Voices Theater Production, really aimed to lift up voices um, of Black uh, poets. And um, this is the kind of events that we do uh, and like to support at the Independent Media Center. Our mission is um, to support the creation and distribution of media and art that emphasizes underrepresented voices and perspectives and promotes empowerment and expression through media and arts education. And um, as, as an organization and a grassroots organization, we're really all about people realizing their own power. Um, we have a staff of just uh, one and a half. So we're a, a really small group and we really are what people make us. Um, so the, the um, Can You Hear Me Now series was organized by someone who sort of found her passion to support um, her community by organizing this uh, series. Out of the Mouths of Babes, you'll see a small picture, um, was organized by another community member who um, got an Urbana Arts Grant to work with youth to create a radio program for them to speak their truths. The Some of the options and programs we have that you can come participate in at the Independent Media Center include WRFU Radio, um, which is 104.5 FM. And if you want to have your own radio show, um, we are a low power radio station, but anyone can um, submit a show. And uh, every third Thursday, there's a WRFU meeting where you can pitch your show. We have some great ones on right now. There's a show that just started, excuse me, last fall. Um, that's a Conhobal uh, language show about Mayan culture and um, our Mayan community here locally. Um, we have a show that's just started up um, about uh, the African diaspora, uh, music of the African diaspora. We have a, a weekly Tuesday and Thursday show that's all about motivation by DJ BJ Clark, who's also our station manager and um, much more. So I encourage you to take a look and or tune in to that radio. Our transmitter is down, unfortunately, right now. We're working on buying a new one. Um, um, but you can listen to us online. The Public Eye newspaper is a community created um, journal. I've got the, the logo right here from an old, um, old copy, um, but it comes out about once a month. And this is published not by professional journalists, but by anyone that wants to write an article. And we have an awesome group of editors that um, support people in, in learning how to write, um, support, um, the editing and the and the layout of this newspaper, and you can see it around town um, and pick it up at the, your local grocery store. The co-ops always got some out out front. Um, the union has some, and you can also find it online. I've got that on the next slide. And then um, a really key part of Urbana Champaign Independent Media Center is that we have a performance venue um, that really emphasizes live in-person connection. And when we talk about disinformation and the the ways you know, contemporary social media algorithms amplify and and profit on um, the sensational news and people um, lifting up haters and all of that. Um, it's really important to us at the Urbana Cham Champagne Independent Media Center to emphasize those in-person connections, um, community connections that happen. And obviously, with COVID, it's it's difficult to do this, but um, we look forward to being able to gather and just have those in-person connections so that we can break down the barriers that um, that that uh, nefarious actors try to build us 
uh, up between us. Um, Unity in Action magazine, uh, Tanya's project also um, does training on journalism, graphic design and broadcasting. I'll uh, flip to this slide where you can just see sort of how to listen to some of this community media. And I encourage you to start really by, by listening to what's out there and then deciding what you think might be missing. Um, there's WRFU, um, you can read the public eye also online follow the IMC on Facebook and Instagram, and then unityinactionmagazine.com is where you can find articles um, by Tanya and folks she works with. Um, I'll just highlight the Sounds Like Community series um, is sort of a sister series, I think, to Friday Forums. Uh, we had a speaker this past Wednesday on Black Health in America. Um, Professor Hogarth gave a, a fascinating presentation on um, the history of really um, a lot of even false research on black folks in, in the history of the country. Um, this coming week, we have an anniversary event for the IMC's 20th anniversary that'll be a, a show and tell. Um, so we sort of combine music, um, lecture and, uh, and forums. Um, so stay tuned for that. You can find that on Facebook or on uh, our website. And uh, I'll just, uh, wrap up um, by again sort of encouraging you to really think about like what stories do you have to share um, or what stories do people you uh, encounter in your life have to share that maybe aren't represented in the mainstream media um, because building and fighting disinformation uh, um, disrupting it as the title of our our talk today says is is in part about uh, taking power back from those um, those forces that want to just use news for um, profit, for um, uh, sensationalism, for influence, and um, we want to be about something something different. So uh, maybe I'll pass it back to Tanya to sort of share share these questions. And um, I was I was concerned that we'd talk a lot, but I, I'm glad to know that we we left a little time because I think there's some rich discussion um, that we can that we can have and um, and uh, uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it to Tanya to sort of introduce these questions and, and see uh, what comes up for us next. Thanks so much for having us on. Great, thank you, Miriam and Maurice. Yes, um, we'd like to open up for some questions and if we do have time, we may even have a chance to, to show that 10 minute um, introduction, uh, a little bit about Quantel Pro and how it's actually relevant. Uh, we have issues currently um, going on now um, and uh, how that actually was trying to research during the Trump presidency. Um, there was a lot of um, a lot of those same, same tactics being used again in our present history. So hopefully we'll get to that video, but if not, let's go ahead and go into our questioning. Um, how has your community been impacted by disinformation or, rest, or racialized disinformation? So these are questions that I would like to um, open up to listeners, um, viewers, and if they would like to weigh in, because it's something for us to think about, right? I mean, social media has created this ability for us to create our own communities. Um, it's become what we've, what we've started to notice to be somewhat of a, um, um, a danger, um, not as, as, as good. I mean, you know, if you get too far into your just own community, then you're not spreading out and having opportunities to engage in others, right? But at the same time, um, if you are looking to be a champion within your community and helping to um, look at disinformation in ways that you can um, do that, you know, just in your own context, in your own community, this question is proposed to you, how has your community been impacted by disinformation or, racial, or racialized disinformation. So do we check the chat box for uh, questions? Is that how they're coming through here? Yeah, I would say that um, if anybody wants to share responses to any of those kind of questions that are asked, definitely feel free to have conversations in the chat. I think that's a great use of that. Um, and if using the Q&A feature, I think you guys should be able to also see the Q&A feature, maybe those questions, but um, somebody just shared that too often young people 
mostly black and brown people are seen as threats to due to this information, white supremacist, white supremacist conditioning. I like to change that narrative as you are all are doing. Um, I don't know if either, if any one of you would like to say anything in response to that, um, but that was a, a great comment that Sharon shared. Well, yeah, I just responded to Sharon via message, but thank you for that. Um, you are absolutely right. Um, and it's continued and evolving. <clears throat> it's getting more detrimental every day, but not just for um, our young black people, but even even for those who believe in the hype, right? Like you, you lose the opportunity to <clears throat> meet these young people where they are if you already have a preconceived idea of who they are. And the image that uh, media, social media, and to our credit ourselves sometimes display is, is kind of counterproductive. Um, so I, I, I thank you for that. I thank you for um, being willing to be one of the fighters in, in this fight that we have. Uh, and you're right, it's not just social media. Um, it's, it's social media, as I was talking last night, um, social media only serves the purpose of getting things out broadly. You know, a lot of things that's been taking place or that you're now starting to see visually have been going on for generations and generations, just never seen. Um, social media also provides a platform to attract more of like-minded people. Uh, so these things are, are, are the tools that's used to spread a lot of it. We think about Fox News. Um, I, don't, I don't really know the audience that we have here, but I don't know what your political views are. But with me, I'm an avid news watcher, right? So I'll go from MSNBC, which is my favorite news show, uh, with, uh, with Mika and, and Joe Scarborough. And then I'll go to CNN, and I'll, I'll, I'll look at them. And then I'll go to Fox and try to see what the narrative is surrounding all the topics that, 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 that's, that's powerful or paramount right now, right? And their narrative is totally different. I, and, and for me, I think, like, what the hell y'all watching? Y'all seeing the totally opposite things that's going on in the world? But think about the audience that they have. Think about Russ Limblom and all the things in the audience that he has. Um, they are complacent in the disinformation and misinformation um, ban as well. Uh, but for us in the neighborhoods who, who are directly on the ground with people, it is our job to give them a different narrative and to kind of uh, combat, right, the, the, the illusion that has been perpetuated in so many different, so many different mediums, man. It, it's weird how it works. Uh, but yeah, it's a fight, bro. It's a fight. But I thank you so much for being a part of the fight. Maurice, do you want to say no? I, oh. Oh, I, I was just going to say, you know, um, even if you look at Unity in Action magazine, for example, is is interested in addressing music. I mean, as an African-American mother, and I can remember even as a teenager, what you see on, on the radio, what you're hearing on the radios, what you're seeing on music videos and things like that, are not representative of the core culture of African-American people. We, we don't agree that that's the lifestyles to follow. Um, and when you're on the outside looking in and you see that this is all on the radio, this is what they're playing, you think that this is what we like. But I can remember as a young girl, we never watched the black entertainment television when it was perpetuating a, a lot of the negative um, things that would you would think were mainstream if you were on the outside looking in, right? So that's a form of disinformation. It's a form of, of leading to others an image that they think we have when we don't. Um, this is a big problem now in our current and, and part of what uh, Parents Against Porn Radio, which is the best name we can come up with right now, but this is a campaign that we'll be rolling out soon because I can remember when way back in the day, XXX radio had to be played after 10 p.m. There's no reason why I should be picking up my child from school and turning on the only black radio station in town or the only mainstream black news radio on FM. And they're playing um, all of this negativity that from the outside looking in, you would think is, is the norm for, for African-American people and communities. So um, 
I, I want people to, to, I challenge you to really look at how disinformation is so many places and how we have to, we can't leave it unchecked because it is dangerous. And what I'm finding now and what we found from the result and the complacency that we've been dealing with this now for, for over 25 years, I mean, but our youth are being extremely impacted now. When you look at violence and when you look at over hypersexuality, they are, our youth are listening to the mainstream radio more than they're listening to their parents because it's mainstream, right? So we've had this problem in the black community for years where we have so many artists that make good music, so many artists that make music that is inspirational for our community, but they can never get on the mainstream radio. So that's partially because we have issues. We need to get to where we have ownership of what's on the larger networks of, um, you know, radio and things like that. But, you know, I was a, I was a first time college grad, right? So we're only in, into this, into two, two, so in, in many places, only two generations of college graduates, right? So as, as a community and a recovery of 400 years of oppression and a continued um, effects of Jim Crow as a, as a people, as a community, we have a lot of progress that needs to be made to help change some of these, right? But that's where allies um, when, uh, come into play to help to support these types of movements and to work with smaller organizations that are working to to become a, a larger voice like Unity in Action Magazine and um, you know HVNT and UCIMC, um, but there's a there's a there's a need now, and we really appreciate. I do want to put out there Unity in Action Magazine is a magazine that um, you just like the public eye. You can create you create the articles. You help to um, uh, change the narratives. So we look forward to you submitting articles to us. Uh, we say real talk, real issues, real solutions. If there's anything that you would like to um, to share and be a part of in the community as a whole. So I see um, <clears throat> a question about uh, whether there are performance arts based and informed strategies and suggestions to counter local gun violence. And um, Maurice, one of the things I was going to say earlier is just um, curious about sort of how media making and critical education plays into your thinking around sort of a key goal for HVNT, which is to, to combat gun violence? Well, the combating gun violence is, it has many tentacles component, right? So you think about <clears throat> some of the, some of the biggest things as Tanya and we, we're speaking about now is media that influences kids now. So for me is, is, is instead of someone else um, speaking truth to their narrative and what's going on with them we create avenues and ways for them to do it themselves. Creative outlets where we teach them skills that they can carry on, not just you know for, for the moment, but skills that they can utilize to build a career with. So we think about Media Art Tech, which is a program that um, we're doing music, videography, production, um, poetry, I'm a spoken word artist. And then we think about filming them, putting them to music, putting them to some kind of theatrical or informative visual piece that can uh, express the thing that's going on directly in their community from them, right? That's a piece, but that piece also ties to getting them off the streets, taking them away from those um, potential violent situations where they can, in turn, be in, uh, um, maybe victims of violence or the perpetuator of, of violence, right? So it's, it's all about for me and for HVNT because we are definitely the uh, trying to stop the gun violence, as my brother William Brown, my partner will often say, in order to take the guns out the hand, we have to put something in them, right? And that's one of the main things I think communities all across this world, especially in high up areas, are failing to realize. I think gun violence has become a, a huge business now. I think a lot of people profit off the plight of other people. I think a lot of people generate money off the violence, um, saying that they're gonna help and use the money to do other things. Um, I think it's a hot topic, but this is something, as they mentioned before, I, I served 17 and a half years in prison for the crime of first degree murder. And I've watched from inside of prison how community leaders, activists, or people pretending to be concerned about gun violence, protest and beg for money and assistance for this thing, and then no one does anything. So the best way that you can aid in stopping gun violence is to get in the neighborhood. 
go know the kids, get to know the kids, make community community again. We're so removed from the ideal of community, especially in black communities, that we become a sovereign nation on our own. We're, le we're left really to, to fend for ourselves. And if, if, we're, if we're not getting the assistance from others, then we're getting the ridicule and the, the banishment and the stigmas, which continues to perpetuate the crime that you're saying you're trying to stop. So there's a lot of things that people can do, but I want, I want those that, of you on this call that are really concerned about eliminating gun violence in your communities, pardon my language, get your ass up and get out there. Go get to know the people. Go, don't, don't judge the area where you're from. Go meet them. Everybody in the community are not bad. You go in the black community, there's not shooting everywhere. It once was a profitable place in a community where every neighbor knew each other. Um, but even now, the sensationalism of different information and propaganda about who each other are is divisive. It, 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 it divides communities. And politicians see that and they play on it. Not just politicians, but community people in itself, right? The purpose should be for one thing, especially on this topic of gun violence. The purpose of being involved with gun violence is to cultivate the minds of the kids involved in it. The mentality to change is the thought of it all. If you could change the thought process of the people who are suffering in it or part of it, if you could change the thought process of it, you change the action of these young people uh, and older people, right? Being, being, being influenced. Don't be somebody standing on the sidelines shooting shots at people really on the ground, being influenced, whatever it may be. You may not have no influence in the world, but your presence in itself is powerful. So my thing is, if you want to get out there and stop the gun violence and help these kids, not stop the gun violence, right? Save the kids. If you want to get out here and save these kids and cultivate these kids, be a surrogate parent and get your ass in the field where we're supposed to be at. That's how you do it. Yes, and, and part of, um, like you were saying with Media Tech is um, we're creating positive media. Media that positively reflects black and brown people. Um, so when we have our youth um, creating media, they're able to put out their narrative. They're able to, to, put, to shine their, their, their issues. Um, and most importantly, we hope to, to, to be where it's main positive, positive images of African-American people and black and brown people are become the, the new mainstream. There's a, a question in here that, that uh, maybe Tanya you could follow up on of uh, sort of how to increase diverse voices, especially from younger people as journalists. Um, I yes. don't know, for me, uh, there's sort of the question of like, what, what are the barriers, but then also like, uh, what are uh, what are the possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. So, what um, Unity in Action Magazine is is working to do is we're hoping to work with um, local schools, local groups, um, and the students that are in our program to um, cultivate what we call future journalists of America. So, um, we're teaching students not only um, how to be journalists, but how to identify news, how giving them understanding that their thoughts are important, um, that they have the, um, the ability to create the change that they seek in their world. So helping them to understand and identify news and um, giving them that outlet. Um, so we'll be featuring um, the work of, of those youth in Unity and Action Magazine, but um, that that's the type of work that we're doing is, is helping them to understand it because because they're they, they're bottled up they're, they're seeing what's going on in the news they're seeing what's going on in the world and we want them to know that they have the power to make change real even as youth so um we're working and uh, if anyone wants to uh, to help support us when i say we i mean us i mean you you viewers or you listeners please contact us please work with us unity in action is about that it's about working with community people, social service agencies and businesses and bringing us all together to address social and economic issues. So when we talk about gun violence, when we talk about stopping disinformation, I mean, we real talk, real issues, real solutions. Um, you, could, you could work with us in some way 
and together we can do this. I, I want to just really encourage folks to visit Unity in Action magazine, um, you know, and 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 the Urbana Champion Independent Media Center sources, because I think, you know, one of the ways um, I think about, particularly as a white ally, that I can do this work and really engage with it is 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 to listen, start by sort of really um, engaging with what's what is there. Um, and so Unity in Action magazine has a great video by a local young person who's speaking about having an incarcerated dad. Um, as well as like a lot of uh, um, positive images lifting up local projects. Um, there's a um, radio show that uh, uh, is on WRFU called Sadie's Babies that's all about talking with youth um, currently. Um, and uh, community, Conscious Community Connections is another um, um, Black-led um, radio show that's all about news happening locally in the black community and and really takes a positive spin on sort of um supporting small businesses and and lifting folks up um and uh and then you know stay tuned for media art tech which is a, a new project in development um and anything that the youth youth build is the program that maurice works with with and and we're we're looking forward to seeing what the youth come up with right we're gonna where are we gonna be able to hear that <clears throat> or see that they're they're working on skits is that right yeah, it's going to be skits. Like like I said, when I was speaking about disinformation, it's just like spreading a rumor. You take somebody that's um, popular, right? Say you take a, a former friend, and the former friend starts spreading disinformation about that friend. It spreads, right? No matter how big or small the scale it spreads, it's still perpetuating the same act. So in order for them to understand what that is, I wanted to do it in a more realistic form. Um, where, where they do it all the time. Social media is like the biggest platform for beefs in the streets in the world, especially for the young people. And a lot of it starts based on lies and um, spreadings of falsehoods. Uh, so that's that's what we're working on skits to just to readily identify it from, from a young people's standpoint. And that was another question on here that a young man, it was an anonymous question. Uh, let me pull it back up. And the first part is like, how do you distinguish between disinformation and a difference of opinion and experience, right? Um, I think that's a great question. I don't think there is no, you can't distinguish it. It's based on you as the individual, right? Your experience has been the teacher of what your ideal and philosophy of life is. So whether or not you grew up and I'll, I'll, make, the, I'll, make, the, I'll make the separation. Well, I'll actually tell a short story. When I was in prison, I had a celly who was a real Ku Klux Klan man. He had the, the damn hat on his arm and the whole nine, right? He was my celly. So when he walked in the cell and he saw me, I was pretty big at the time. You know, he was real standoffish on approaching me. So one day I was sitting on my bed and I had, you know, offered all the amenities to him. And I said, man, what is that on your arm? And he said, it's a Klansman hood, but I'm not racist. That's what he said. So in my mind, like, you got to explain this to me. How the hell are you not racist? You got a whole hood on your arm. You represent it for real. He said, no, my best friend is black. So, you know, I don't want to use the value. His best friend's name was Hunk Nig. If you guys can catch that. Hunk Nig, right? So the N for the black side, the Hunk for the white side, because he was a biracial young man. And so as I'm talking to him, he's like, man, that's my friend. He had no racist nothing in him. He was a real humble cat. I even spoke to his father, who was a grand something in that stuff. And I spoke to his mother, which were the two that first actually bought my book. But what it was, it was the indoctrination of where he was from, the community that he was in, and the language that was spread throughout that community. Think as a child, a child don't know these things unless they're taught. These behaviors are taught. So when you think about this broad widespreadness of the disinformation that disproportionately affects black people, it was something that was taught. It wasn't only taught by the parents, it was taught by the founding fathers of this country. It was taught through the constitution of the United States. It was taught through the policies and laws that affect us. It was taught through the systematic way that they portray black people from the beginning, whether it's in movies, books, stories, or whatever it is. And then you look at the from the black standpoint, we're growing up as kids being indoctrinated with you're less than, you're not that, you don't know where you're from, what is your culture, where you come from, and being met with these same things in the school environment, work environment, 
political environments with no one really being honest about what's going on. So you can't distinguish it. You'll never know a racist when you see it. You'll never know a person who believes in falsehood when you see them. But for you as an individual, you have to learn how to identify it yourself and how not to continue to spread that misinformation and be an ally in getting out there and stopping it. So if you're, if you're a white ally and you're around white friends who believe in racist ideology, you have to be the one to try to correct them. But if you can't, you got to stand back and be like, man, this generation's of the same stuff being pushed into people. So there's no way, if that answers your question, there's no way to distinguish it. It's your experience, it's your opinion. If you believe that African-American people are made from monkeys, then you crazy as hell, that's on you. There's nothing I can do to change that, right? If that is your belief, and there's someone who taught you to believe that you need to talk to them to distinguish the difference, right? If that makes sense. <laughs> That's all I have right now. Maurice, do you want to put your contact information in the chat so people can reach out to you if they have, if they want to get in touch? Yes, I will. I put my email address on there and my website. Um, Um, I think we're getting kind of close to time. So um, thank you all for being here today. I think this was an amazing discussion and really enjoyed learning about it. I sent that directly to you, Tiger. Oh, I did. Yeah, I think if you change it to panelists and attendees, I think then everyone okay, should be. That's dope. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people were interested in the, the video you mentioned. I don't know if there's any way that maybe you would be able to either share that or if there's a link to it. Um, but um, thank you for answering so many of uh, so many of the questions that we had, and thank you all for asking really engaging questions. Um, really fruitful conversation and discussion. Is there anything you'd like to say just to kind of close everything off for today? Thank you all. Um... For, for having interests and we hope that this is not the last time that we work together on this. Thank you. I thank y'all for attending. Like, and one thing I'll say before I leave is, no matter what information you receive, be truthful to you. Whoever you are, you gotta be truthful to who you are. Don't be no phony person. If you messed up, admit you messed up. That's the only way that you learn how to cure the ill that you have. And if you're an ally for real, then for real be an ally. Not only in, in saying it on camera, but let your actions be what it is. Because the truth don't line the things you say, the truth line the things that you do. And if you're lying and I find out you're lying, I'm gonna tell you about it. Thanks so much for having us on. And uh, I look forward to more conversation as well. Amazing. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, if you're interested in kind of continuing this Friday Forum series, next week we're going to be talking to Lauren Haynes from Code for America about technology and data for positive social impact. So definitely join us again uh, next Friday at noon. Um, and thank you for joining us today. So have a good rest of your Friday, everyone. Deuces, deuces. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.